Hey guys, welcome back. So today I have a very exciting video for you guys. I actually have a live demo of the Corellian platform, which I mentioned in my previous video. Uh, so if you watched this video three days ago, you'll notice I talked about the Corellian platform, which is an upcoming platform for virtualized iPhone hardware. Uh, but in this video, there wasn't really a lot of information online that I could really work with to talk about this. So it's a very, um, it's very limited with what I could say. But today I actually have a live demo coming from Chris Wade from Corellium, who actually contacted me after I made this video, offering to give me this live demo. Uh, for the purpose of creating a second video. So we had an online meeting, I asked him a few questions and uh, he gave me a demo, he showed me all the features and how this all works and explained uh, various different things about it. So I'm gonna be showing you guys that demo and I'm gonna have a voiceover of me sort of explaining what he was explaining at the time so that you guys get a better insight to what this platform is gonna be like when it's released sometime in March. So here is the Corellium UI and uh, the first thing that Chris showed me was the uh, process of creating a new device or a new project. So each device comes under a project and there is a limit on the amount of devices or projects you can have open at one time. Um, but you can see here he creates a new project and uh, we get to the section where we can pick a specific device to uh, virtualize. So at the moment these are the supported ones although he does have plans to add uh, various other ones in the future. So you can see we've got uh, various different iPhones, so iPhone 6, iPhone 6 Plus, um, basically all 64-bit devices. I don't think any 32-bit devices are supported with this. So he chooses an iPhone 6 and then we get taken onto the next part where we can choose the version. Or we can actually choose if we want to uh, restore from a kind of backup. So if you have a previously installed version, you can actually restore from it there. But uh, we can see we have a version specific number. So here we have 11.2.6 and then below that we have the ability to choose whether we want it jailbroken or non-jailbroken. So when you basically restore this, it will be already pre-jailbroken if we select the jailbroken option, which he does right now. And then uh, we confirm the details of the device. It shows you a quick summary, again, with the OS version is 11.2.6. Uh, and then we have uh, some more customization options. So here's the advanced boot option. So we can actually set boot arcs if you want um, things like verbose boot. Uh, you can apply kernel patches if you want custom ones. You can add your own binaries um, hashes to the AMFI trust cache to allow specific apps to run. And there's various other uh, more advanced customization options that you get within here. So again, he confirms the details and uh, then the project will now show up in the list or in the devices. And uh, when he clicks on that, it's going to begin creating a device. And this is going to set up all the virtualization and then it's going to go through with a process similar to the iTunes restore. It'll actually show you sort of a verbose output so you can see what's actually going on behind the scenes. But it's essentially the same process um, as iTunes. So it will actually download the IPSW as long as you're not doing restore from a backup. Uh, and then it will flash this to the device and restore it the same way iTunes would on a physical iPhone and uh, then we'll be booted into a fresh install of iOS on our new virtualized iPhone. So while the restore is happening, it did show me a couple of other things here where you can connect to the device once the restore is complete. So there we have SSH, uh, you can SSH into it with that IP address and port. Uh, you can actually attach GDB or LLDB or IDA Pro to the kernel and actually do some live kernel debugging, which I did mention in the previous video. That's going to be one of the main beneficial features um, of this platform. And uh, there's a couple of other things there as well. So once the restore completed, the device booted for the first time and we are now on the uh, lock screen and he clicks the home button here and it shows the home screen. So this is a real build of iOS as I did mention in the other video. This is not a simulation as the, the way Xcode simulates it. It's not the same thing. This is a real build of iOS that you'd find on a regular iPhone. Now he shows here in the settings app, it's iOS 11.2.6 and we have the Corellium i6 serial number to prove this is virtualized hardware and not a real iPhone. Um, and then he just shows a couple other things here around the UI in the settings app and he demonstrates how you can connect to Wi-Fi. So the next thing he showed me was the ability to use SciCrypt or Script, which is actually built straight into the Corellian platform. Now, Script or SciCrypt, if you don't already know, is a tool written by Jay Freeman that allows you to sort of interact with running processes and modify their methods and hook them. And a lot of tweak developers use this to develop their jailbreak tweaks, but it's also got a lot of other uses. Now, the version built into Corellium actually has some extra features. So, for, for example, this process list here at the side in the blue, you can see this lists all the current running processes along with their process ID. And uh, he gives me a quick example here of how do you, how you can uh, attach to Springboard and uh, mess around with a few things. Now, if you want to learn more about SciCrypt, then you can watch my other video on that. So after the demo, I did have a chance to ask Chris a couple of questions. Now, I asked him, first of all, about the pricing for this service as well as the release date. Now, for the pricing, he said that it's currently undecided, but it will depend on the demand for the product once it is out there. And uh, for the release date, he said the same thing as what the website already says. So hopefully sometime during March. He didn't give any specific date, but hopefully sometime in March. And he did say that when it is out there, it will likely be invite only, meaning there'll be sort of a limited number of users who can actually access it and uh, sign up for it in the first place. But I'm assuming they're going to adopt more users as the platform becomes more popular and as time goes on.
And so finally, I asked him about his tweet regarding the HomePod jailbreak. Now, if you guys saw this, here he essentially tweets um, a shell from the HomePod showing the uname A um, output, so the kernel version, uh, essentially showing that he has a jailbroken HomePod, but obviously it's a virtualized HomePod. So I asked if this device will be supported on the platform, as from the video, we can only see iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Um, but he did say that he has an experimental version working for some other devices. So the, the HomePod, he also mentioned the Apple TV, um, and he says some other devices as well. So I'm hoping the Apple Watch will be in there and a few other ones. But um, the, he said that these are only experimental at the moment and there's quite a few bugs. And he's also trying to find a good way of actually visualizing the HomePod because obviously it's not a, it's not really got a screen as we would um, use on an iPod or an iPhone. So it needs a, a nice way to visualize that for it to actually work well with the uh, service. Um, but he said those ones would likely be coming later. So I, I assume in the, those are not going to be in the first version of this when it's actually out there available to the public. So that's pretty much it for the video. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that demo. Obviously big thanks to Chris for allowing me to use this footage for the video. Um, go ahead and follow him as well as the official uh, Corellium Twitter account and as well as everyone else working on this great new platform for more updates to this. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments uh, below. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I will see you next time.